Hi everyone and welcome along to our July DIY pop kit tutorial. I'm going to take you through how to pot all of our July, uh, July pots up, show you the processes, each stage, and then also show you how to look after each individual pot kit, how to look after the plant and some floristry top tips. Um, I'm also going to show you our brand new Berg's Potter uh, terracotta pots. They've just come in all the way from uh, Tuscany. They are absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to show you what we have and how they look with our plants. So let's begin. So we're going to begin with our first of the July DIY pockets, which is the indoor hydrangea. Um, we have this beautiful sort of fresh white green hydrangea, um, which you can keep indoors. It's absolutely fine too. They are a high maintenance plant in that they need lots of watering. So I would probably say you'll be looking at watering possibly daily if it's hot, um, maybe every other day um, if it's sort of not so warm. Um, but they really are a rewarding plant for all your efforts. They are beautiful. They look gorgeous in our new terracotta pot. So this is our Copenhagen pot. It's um, on the larger size so that it means your root system will really have space to grow and um, comes with this lovely gorgeous saucer making it an indoor and an outdoor um, pot with the hydrangea you can keep them indoors obviously um, they do really well um, inside you can also put them outside so if you're finding that it's looking a bit kind of tired or you want to change up and you think i'm actually going to keep this on my table outdoors or plant it in the ground that's also absolutely fine so it can be placed either. So let's get started. So in your kit, as always, you will have the gravel, the compost, and the mosses, as well as the plant and the pots that come with them. So for starters, we're going to pop in our gravel just to add some extra drainage. Now I would suggest doing this with the source already in place because obviously there's a drainage hole so then if any of the gravel goes under, or goes through the hole, sorry, it's fine, it doesn't matter. So add just a couple of handfuls of gravel to the base. Now, as I said, with a hydrangea, it's best to go in a bigger pot. So we've, we've provided you with a bigger pot than the plant pots so that the root system can develop, as I said. So you'll, you will need um, some compost. And it's also worth mentioning, as, as I said about it being a really high maintenance plant, um, it will need a really good water before you pot. So as soon as your box arrives, take the plant out, give it a really good drink, stick it in the sink with lots of water, um, or pop it in the garden, give it a really good hose down. Um, you will also find benefit from um, spritzing your hydrangea. So if you have one of those kind of like hairdresser kind of spritz guns, Give the, um, the mop heads a really good spritz because they do take in a lot of their um, water from their, their petals. So, and also if it's really, really looking tired, if you've forgotten to water it or you've been away and you've forgotten to put it in some water, the heads will definitely droop, but you will be really surprised at how quickly they come back with a really good drink and a good spritz. So we've put the gravel in. You can now take your hydrangea pot out. You will find when you receive it more likely that you will have these kind of um, sort of skewers, twig supports. You can leave them on if you want to, or you can take them off, depends. So I'm just going to add it to the pot, and then I obviously know that I'm going to need to add a decent amount of compost to go around the sides to fill the pot. So where's my compost? Let's move this to the side. So you're going to add in the compost all the way around the plant, making sure there's not too much air pockets within the plant. Apologies. Not that you need to see my face, but a vertically challenged behind this huge hydrangea. Okay, so 
so that's looking good. So then you push your plant down. Again, trying to remove any of the um, air bubbles and pockets in the plant pot. Okay, and then you can go in with your moss if you want to. So um, we have two different types of moss. We have the bun moss, which is this gorgeous sort of um, green, vibrant green moss, and then the sort of almost two-tone, I suppose, um, sphagnum moss. And again, it's optional if you want to use the moss. I personally think it finishes off the plant beautifully. So that will just go sit atop your soil. Let's move that. And then as I've said a few times before on, on other tutorial videos, when you use moss, it's really important to remember that, you, that you're not mistakenly watering the moss instead of the plant. So when you water, please make sure, please make sure that you are watering sort of almost in the middle of the plant. So it's really getting down to that soil and it gives the plant a really good drink. So there you have it, your indoor hydrangea, a beautiful rewarding plant, needs lots of water, but it's definitely worth it in our gorgeous new raw terracotta pot. Okay, so next in our July DIY pockets is the mini myrtle tree, or the little myrtle tree. So this is a gorgeous topiary tree, a real sort of native Italian plant. So gorgeous, with these tiny sprigs of green leaves. It looks stunning in the pots. I can't wait to show you how it looks. It works beautifully on a tablescape, so if you have sort of varying height pots with different um, plants in, different sort of tones of green, um, all of different heights, going along an outdoor table, um, absolutely beautiful, it just works so, so well. So with this, as the same with our other pockets, you'll have your gravel, which you put in your pot, already on its, in its saucer, so that the gravel doesn't sink through the hole. So just a couple of handfuls, you don't need too much, it's just so that the roots don't sit um, in water for too long. And then to take your plant, just quite simply, after giving it a really, really good drink, take it out of the pot and simply place in. Now you'll notice it's slightly too big for the, um, for the um, pot, so that's why we just add in a little bit of compost, which you will get in your kits. Not very much, just a little bit, just to go around the sides more than anything. It doesn't really need to go on the top. Make sure that goes all the way down and then firmly press just to get rid of any air pockets that are further down in the plant. Okay, so now you have your um, tree planted, your mini myrtle tree. Now we can add in the mosses. So as with the other kits, we have the bun moss, which is this lovely kind of vibrant green moss. Um, it's fresh, um, fresh moss, so it just looks so effective. So that goes in at the base of the plant, like so. I tend to leave some gaps, so then I, then I add in the sphagnum moss, which is a slightly different tone of green. With the myrtle, just some top tips for it, Keep it watered, obviously. It's an outdoor plant, so it's not for indoors. Um, obviously, the pot is for indoors and outdoors, that hence the saucer um, and the drainage hole so that you can keep plants outside. But I would say that keep it how it is in terms of the shape for this, for this summer. Then when it comes to spring, um, give it a, a, a prune um, mid-spring um, into the shape that you want it, whether you want it really structured or, or you might want to leave it because it's already um, sprouting some new growth, which will make it look a little bit less sort of ball shape, a little bit more um, rustic, a bit more unstructured. So it completely depends on personal choice as to how you want it to look. But I would suggest pruning in spring, 
keeping it well watered, um, it likes a bit of sunlight, um, and keeping it outdoors. If you decide to take it out of a pot and repot it in a different pot, you um, can then use this pot indoors um, for your indoor plants or for your herbs or you know for whatever you fancy. You can even, even put some chicken wire in the pot and um, maybe do some sort of preserved um, foliage arrangement in it. So they are really, really multifunctional. But with the myrtle, keep them outdoors. So there you have it, your mini little myrtle tree in its gorgeous pot. Okay, so next up in our July kits is the tall myrtle tree. So you've just probably seen the, um, the little myrtle tree um, tutorial, just potted that one up just at the front there. And to go with it, we also have this gorgeous tall um, myrtle tree. So it's about, I think it's about 40 to 50 centimetres tall. So it's not massive, um, works really well, as with the, the small uh, myrtle tree, works really well on tablescapes because um, it create, creates that underlying um, height variance. So it's beautiful on tablescapes. Also, if you um, have a certain sort of area in your garden that you wanted to feature or to showcase, it works really well in that respect as well. So this pot, um, this myrtle plant comes with our gorgeous Simona ribbed uh, rose terracotta pot and matching saucer. Um, one of my absolute favourites of, of the collection actually. So detailed, gorgeous ribbing on its side and comes with the most gorgeous little terracotta um, saucer with little feet. Um, so yeah, just really, really beautiful and really chuffed with these pots. So as ever, adding in your gravel to the bottom, sit your pot in its saucer before you add it in. Just a couple of handfuls, just to keep the roots from um, sitting in water. And then after a nice long drink for your myrtle tree, just take it out of its pot and quite simply place it in the pot. It fits perfectly in these Simona um, plant pots. Um, it's up to you. I will add compost into these kits um, just in case you want to raise the height. I personally am not going to add any in, mainly because I want to add the moss and I want the moss to sort of be just level with the rim of the pot. So I don't want to add um, compost on top and then for the moss to sort of sit um, uncomfortably almost on, on top. I want it to be sort of flush. So in your kit, you will have your two types of moss. You'll have your green bun moss and your sort of two-tone sphagnum moss. So as you can see there, by not adding the compost, it just sits beautifully sort of flush with the, um, with the pot. And then the sphagnum moss, which is a bit drier in texture, so it's nice how they contrast with each other. So watering this plant, uh, depending on the weather, if it's warm, um, every two, couple of days, maybe maybe more, depending how hot it is, um, and also whether you have it in um, full sun or not. Um, another tip is to prune in spring. As I said with the small um, myrtle tree, prune in spring um, to your desired shape um, or leave it to go a bit wilder, a bit less um, structured. Um, but there you have it. That is your tall myrtle pot kit. Okay, so next up in our July kits, we have the Ilex Topiary Ball Kit. So this is very similar to box um, but you don't have the problems with it whereby you might get a caterpillar or two on it and then it just gets eaten alive within sometimes hours. I've had um, box hedge eaten by a caterpillar, well lots of caterpillars, in the space of a weekend. So it's really really disappointing when you spend that time on your box and um, it gets eaten. Anyway, so we have Ilex instead which doesn't have that problem. Um, and it's a much better solution. You still get that gorgeous, um, structured, topiary look, um, which works really beautifully with sort of more rustic flowers, um, 
and plants, things are a bit more um, unstructured in their form. So adding a, 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 a topiary ball next to things like um, an olive or a hydrangea or lavender or um, you know some verbena or something really works beautifully. So with this kit, it comes in a 21 centimeter um, raw rose terracotta pot. The reason we've gone with a bigger pot is because it will grow and it means that you have scope to really increase the size. So every season when you prune in spring, it will have obviously grow, uh, grown throughout the summer so you can keep it at a decent size so it will grow um, and yeah, it just they just look absolutely wonderful. So with your pot, when you begin, you need to add in your gravel. So pop the gravel in the base. Again, put your pot in its saucer, on its saucer first. And then you're going to add some compost in first before you add the plant. So let's just move that around. So add in your compost on top of your first, so the first layer of gravel and then see how you find it see how it sits that's about probably about right so i'm going to give it a go i've watered it so it's nice and well watered gently take it out of its pot and just sit it in so you will see that it needs added compost to it but what i'm looking for is probably just to give you an idea, I'd say maybe one to one and a half, maybe two centimetres lower than the rim of the pot so that you've got space for your moss. Um, but at the same time, it's sitting nice and high, not too low. Um, and yeah, you're going to have a uh, scope to really build and sort of um, develop a really gorgeous um, Ilex Topiary ball for your garden. So adding in more compost around the sides. Not something I'm good at actually. I always make such a mess and wonder why I don't do these tutorials in the garden. Maybe next time. So adding in the compost all the way around to all of the gaps. Maybe a little bit more. And then making sure you're pushing it down so that there's no, no air pockets further down into the plant. And then this is where you can add in your moss on top. So as with the other pots, we have the green bun moss. and the sphagnum moss. So I want it just to sit, I don't know if you can see, just slightly higher than the rim of the pot. So it sort of almost hides the, um, the base of, of the plant. And you do that all the way around and then add in sections of your sphagnum moss in the gaps. I like it when it hangs over, so feel free to sort of let it do its thing. And there you have it, the Ilex Topiary Ball Kit. Room to grow next season and seasons after. Beautiful outside, but again, for your tablescapes or placed on the floor, or um, yeah, anywhere in your garden where it adds some structure to um, you know, a herbaceous border or a real lovely cottage garden, um, perfect with other sort of more rustic plants. So I really hope you enjoy this one. So we're now going to move on to our little olive tree kit. Um, when you receive your kit, you may receive either one of these options. We get both from um, our plant growers both of the same variety. One is just slightly um, sort of taller, I guess, um, and the other is probably more sort of, it's a bit wider. So yeah, that's the difference. Um, but they will both grow exactly the same, uh, both the same variety. So they'll end up looking um, the same eventually. 
So I'm going to go with a slightly smaller one um, for our kit. Um, we have the beautiful 14 centimetre, a centimetre uh, Copenhagen pot, and it's lovely saucer matching. Um, so if we puff plant up, and I'll um, go through some sort of tips about olive um, as we go. So adding in a decent amount of gravel into your container, just uh, into your pot, sorry, just so that we're really making sure the root system is not sat in, in water. So that's a really important um, part of um, olive care. So then adding in after watering it well, your olive, and popping it in. Now I don't, oh no, actually I, I thought I'd gone too high with the gravel. So that actually fits um, beautifully in this pot. It doesn't necessarily need any more compost um, after sort of gently patting it down. But before I forget to say it, and it's really important, the thing about olive is that it needs to be in sort of nutritious soil. So we have an olive in our garden, we have a couple of olives in our garden, one of which this year has started to get sort of brown tinges on its leaves. As soon as it starts doing that, what we did for it was we, we moved it, we moved positions and actually it seems to have um, come back to life. I'm looking at it now and it looks, it looks okay. But I do know that it needs repotting. So when you receive your, receive your olive kit, it will be obviously come in the compost that it's already in. I would recommend a feed if if you really want it to kind of do really, really well and just to sort of thrive and grow, then I would maybe look at um, a tomato-based feed, a tomato feed, or um, we use as well um, horse manure from a, a local farm, um, but either one of those is great. So give us a good feed. You uh, look at the instructions on the back of the um, pack, obviously, as to how you make it up and what... Um, proportions you use for it but just yeah give it a nice little feed um if you feel like it's sort of starting to struggle the other thing you can do is repot into a slightly bigger pot or just sort of add a bit more compost that might be a bit more nutritious for it so that is kind of when you start to see it going brown on the edges you know that it's needing something it's not necessarily dying it's just um it's lacking nutrition from from what it's sat in at that point so either add some feed or consider repotting this is probably be more likely to be next season i think it will be fine in these pots for this season but in terms of you know next year and the year after um consider a bigger pot um, as it grows the other thing um with olive is um watering it's a mediterranean plant obviously so they have much better weather than we do so they don't necessarily have the kind of sort of more, um, conti not continuous, that's the wrong word, more sort of regular rain that we have here. So the best thing for it is to give it, maybe weekly, depending on the weather, a really, really good drink. So that it's really, really um, quenched and then leave it. Leave it for maybe a week, unless it's hot. And then put your finger in and feel the, the soil. If you if you put your finger down into the soil and you've got sort of the, the top, maybe a couple of centimetres is dry, then give it to water again. So what you're aiming for is water, wait till the top sort of centimetre or two is dry and then water again. So just keep an eye on it. it I'm making it sound like they're really high maintenance, but they're not. Um, we've got a couple and we don't really do anything to them. Um, obviously one of them we're repotting this year, but they're a lovely, lovely, plant to have in the garden. Now the other thing to mention is the fact that you can have olive indoors. So we have tried um, with one um, unsuccessfully but I know what I did wrong, I overwatered it and I bought it straight in from the garden in the, when was it, in the autumn. Brought it straight in, terracotta under floor heating, it was not happy. It needs a transition, so you need to transition it from the garden into the, um, your indoor space, um, which sounds like a lot of hard work, but even if it's just you just bring it in for a few hours, take it back out. The next day, maybe bring it in for a bit longer. But what I did is I completely shocked this olive that is now gone. Um, I shocked it from being outside in quite cool um, weather conditions in autumn. And then I brought it into a heated house 
under, I set it on top of under floor heating and it was not happy and it sadly died. So don't do what I did, just transition it gently. I mean, you could even try bringing it in, maybe late summer, really, maybe looking at September, bring it in where it's still warm in the house, but you might not have turned your central heating on at that point, and then um, it might transition a bit better and you might get more from it. If you find it's looking really sad like when you bought it indoors, if you want to bring it indoors, give it, a, give it a bit more time, and if it's still looking sad, take it back outside. And that will just have to be an outdoor olive and you'll really, really enjoy it over the years as, um, as it gets bigger. Um, it's definitely one of my absolute favourites. So anyway, sorry. So we've potted it in its plant pot and now we're going to add the compost on top. With an olive ongoing, the, the compost, will, uh, the, the moss, sorry, will dry um, and might not last. I mean, it will last in terms of it will just dry out and probably fade slightly. It doesn't matter. I, I like a mossed base on my olive but I also think it looks really nice and sort of almost more kind of um, Mediterranean to have the terracotta with the soil and then the, the beetle sage olive leaves. So anyway, we're going in with the moss anyway because you have it in your kit and if you choose to use it, great. If you don't, it doesn't matter. It will look beautiful anyway. So we're going to put the bun moss in, mixed in with your sphagnum moss. And there we have it, super easy. Again, make sure that you water the plant, not the moss. So ideally, um, maybe use a jug that you pour the water right next to the, um, the plant base, um, the base of the tree, so that it's definitely getting that water. So here we are with our next at July DIY kit. It's the tall olive tree. Again, much like the um, small olive tree, the little olive tree, it's one of my absolute favourites um, to have in the garden. Um, so I'm going to talk you through how to plant it and how to pot it up um, and then I'll briefly go over um, sort of the olive tips um, because I've just waffled on for ages with the um, little lavender, little olive tree tutorial section. So if you want more detail on how to look after olive trees um, indoors and out, um, then maybe skip back to the um, little olive tree so that I don't completely bore you out of your minds. Anyway, so you have your gorgeous rose terracotta Burke's Potter pot and your matching saucer. Um, just actually while we're talking about pots, worth mentioning with them, they are raw terracotta, they're raw um, Italian clay. So that means that they will absorb the atmosphere. So wherever you have them, if you have them in the garden, they will absorb the atmosphere and they will also age so beautifully because they are not sort of um, treated or sort of, they don't have any kind of sort of special um, sort of treatment on top of them. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but hopefully you get my gist. Um, they are also really, really um, frost safe, which is obviously really handy in the garden when you're using terracotta pots. Um, so you'll find over the years they will become more sort of mossy and even more rustic in look and feel but they really are just so beautiful they arrived a couple of weeks ago and i would say they probably they did take my breath away when i opened the box they're just gorgeous and they're even more lovely in real life and i just hope that you love them as much as you've all loved the um aged terracotta pots, which will be back. I'm not letting go of those by any means, but um, I just thought for summer, let's do something different. Um, and then, you know, we'll have these for some of the months and then the terracotta resin dipped for other months. And um, yeah, we'll just mix it up. So I hope you love them as much as I do. So anyway, moving on to the tall olive kit. Um, pop your pot on its saucer and go in with your gravel. As with the little olive tree, a decent amount because we don't want them sat, the roots sat in, in lots of water. <clears throat> Excuse me. So adding, after a nice drink, take your tree out of its pot and place. And I love it when that happens. It just fits beautifully. You don't need to do anything else. In fact, you don't need any more compost than this. It's, it's 
perfect, it sits beautifully in this pot. Um, what I will say is, <clears throat> just briefly, add in maybe some tomato feed or some horse manure um, around the base of your plant. Um, it may have exhausted a lot of its nutrients in its compost already, hopefully it won't because they're lovely and fresh, but you never know if it's starting to sort of look a bit tired or brown around the leaves. Give it a nice feed, tomato feed is absolutely perfect, you can get that um, online or in garden um, centres really easily and it will, um, it will perk it up. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll add in the compost, uh, the moss, so we have the fun moss, which is just going to sit around the base of the tree. And then in the gaps, I'm going to pop the sphagnum moss. Adds a lovely, lovely texture. Just obsessed with moss, as you probably have realised. But I really think it just finishes off your um, kit so beautifully um, and really works well with the pots as well. So that is your tall olive plant tree. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else worth mentioning now. Um, briefly, so watering, um, water really well in one go, give it a bit of time. If the top of the plant um, feels dry when you put your finger into the soil, um, give it another water. But don't sort of water it daily or um, every couple of days like you would say um, your hydrangeas or your um, lavenders. Just, just give it a really good soaking and then leave it um, just much like it, you would, it would um, excuse me, much like it would have if it was in um, sort of its native uh, Mediterranean environment. Um, so yeah, that is your tall olive kit. Okay, so we're now moving on to our little lemon tree pot kit tutorial section. Now these, um, to be honest, blow my mind. I just can't get over how gorgeous they are and how you have a plant so little with these gorgeous fruits. I, I just, I love them, I love them so much. Anyway, so when they arrive to you, they will be green because um, they are lovely and fresh, um, but they will obviously eventually turn yellow with some really good sunlight and um, some good drinking. So we're gonna pop this up again in our gorgeous Copenhagen rose terracotta pot. We've gone for, a, again, a slightly bigger pot for it so that its root system has um, a good chance to sort of develop. Um, so add in your gravel first, a decent amount so that they don't um, sit in moisture. So I've got probably a, an inch worth of gravel in there. And then after a nice water, gosh, I've got those lovely roots, add in your lemon tree. Now you'll see that it needs extra compost around it. So we'll go in with that, you'll have that obviously in your kit. So let's add the compost in, just around the edges, not necessarily on top, um, just more down the sides, sort of breaking the air sockets, air sockets, air pockets. And then firmly pressing down to make sure there's no air. And again, I've left a decent amount, probably sort of just under an inch um, of space between my the soil on my plant and the rim of my pot. Purely um, to add some moss in just to kind of finish it off, which again, are obviously in your kit. Um, so I'll add that in and then I'll talk you through some sort of um, lemon tree pointers. So going with the bun moss, which is the more vibrant green um, moss here. And then finishing with the sphagnum moss in the gaps. So with lemon trees, you can have them indoors and outdoors, which is obviously a winner in my book. In terms of having them outdoors, <clears throat> excuse me, they need, 
obviously lots of sunlight. Um, they are plants that like a humid condition. So if you're watering them, maybe give them a kind of a mist. If your um, hose pipe does that, give them a mist, or you can use one of those sort of hairdresser kind of misters, um, as you would with your hydrangeas. Um, give them really good water regularly. So I would say every two days if it's hot. Um, but go by how the plant's looking. So on this plant, you can see it's got new shoots, new growth. Um, so it's obviously really happy. Um, I've kept them really well watered um, and in the sun. So yeah, sun and, sun and water really for a lemon tree will keep it happy. Um, and some regular misting as well because they like that sort of humidity. In terms of bringing them indoors, so you'd have your lemon plant now outside in the garden. Um, you know, again, beautiful on a tablescape. Um, you know, imagine having friends or family over for dinner or for lunch and it would just be such a sort of, oh, is that a real lemon kind of thing? You know, it's just a really nice feature to have um, on your table. Also works beautifully mixed with other plants again, you know, whether it's sort of the topiary or the lavender or some herbs, um, just all work so nice together. Um, so I was saying about transitioning indoors. Okay, so you're keeping it outdoors obviously for the summer. Then as it starts to get cooler, you'll need to bring it in. So lemon trees don't love central heating. So don't plonk them by a radiator by any means. Keep them away. Keep them somewhere, ideally a conservatory if you have one, or a porch, um, but keep them somewhere if you don't. I keep mine usually in a kitchen, in my kitchen, and spritz the hell out of them. So that's how I keep them alive. That's how I've kept them going in the past. Don't get me wrong, they haven't grown massively when I've kept them indoors because I don't, I don't personally have a conservatory or, or a greenhouse. Um, but I want to keep them indoors anyway. So I just make sure I really mist them um, with one of those spritz guns, um, keep them really well watered, away from central heating kind of sources, away from a radiator, don't pop them on the floor um, with underfloor heating like I did with my olive. Um, yeah, just kind of be mindful, look after it if you can, just keep an eye on it, just see, you'll see, it'll tell you what it needs. If it's looking really sad, um, it might be worth a feed um, tomato feed. Um, tomato feed is really good for basically any fruiting um, plant or vegetable plant. Um, so give it a nice feed and um, yeah, just keep an eye on it. But I really think that you'll get so much enjoyment from it and it's really so rewarding seeing it turn um, from green to yellow and as the flowers develop and then the, the little lemons start to, to grow, it's just it's really lovely. It's a really kind of quite a magical plant. So I really hope you like it. So the next section for our tutorial for our July kits is the Purple Lavender Trio kit. So these, this comes with three of these gorgeous sort of miniature 10 centimeter pot sized lavenders that smell gorgeous. They are so beautiful. And then even more beautiful are the pots. They are they are just so gorgeous, so detailed, as I've said before, in this sort of ribbed um, rose terracotta with these tiny little kind of bobbles on the top for the detailing and the most gorgeous matching sauces. So they come in a set of three with these lavender kits. Um, perfect for your tablescapes, um, you know, sort of equally spaced out along a table um, or clustered. If you have a round garden table, they will look beautiful in a sort of a cluster of three, how I've got them here. They also work really nicely with our other pot kits. All of them are designed to be mixed and matched if you want to create a really sort of show-stopping um, tablescape. So I'm gonna talk you through how to pot these up and we'll see how we go. So pots in their sources already so that the gravel that you add in doesn't then fall out. So not too much, just a little bit of gravel at the bottom, just to add some drainage. And then after a really, really good drink, um, just gently tease them out of their pots. And then just pop them in and they fit perfectly. You just gently press them down. There you go. 
So in this kit, um, there won't be any um, compost because you don't need it. They fit beautifully in these um, Simona pots. They just smell so lovely. Now I know we did um, lots of white lavender for our kits last um, in June, so the last pot kits we did. So I thought I'd mix it up this this month <clears throat> and go with some purple lavender. For me in the garden, I love whites and greens and then maybe a sort of apricot. I've got some gorgeous apricot David Austin roses and then some um, purple lavender. I just think that sort of combination of, of colours looks beautiful together. So those are all now potted up and then you can add in your moss which comes in your kit. So we have, as with all the other kits, your um, bun moss which is your kind of more vibrant green, fresh moss. You might just need to break off little bits of this because there's not a huge amount of space. I'll try and um, get a reel done of, um, of this kit, I think, potting up. So you can watch the reel if you'd rather be quicker. And then add in your sphagnum moss. just goes in the gaps. So when I put the moss in these I kind of go in them sort of almost a triangle shape. So three mm -hmm. bits of, um, of the bun moss and then three of the sphagnum moss in, in the gaps. Okay and there you have it. So these lavender just a quick sort of few tips. Um, you can keep lavender indoors, as you know, um, our pot kits last month, we had white lavender that um, many of you um, kept successfully in your kitchens and sent you lots of pictures and they were gorgeous. Um, you can do the same with purple lavender, you can keep it indoors. Um, it's, it's just sunlight and water really is what keeps it happy. Um, but by all means, have a Google, um, have a look. You, there's some really good blogs on, um, keeping um, lavender indoors and also other plants indoors for people who don't have gardens. So um, it, that might be handy, you might get some good tips there. Um, but I have designed these um, with the garden in mind personally. I think they um, just look so gorgeous in the garden with their colour and um, I personally have them on my table. Um, and I just love, you know, with friends over, barbecues or whatever, um, they just make a really beautiful tablescape just on their own, just the three of them sat there together. So um, yeah, I really hope you enjoy this kit. So our next pot kit for July is our Herb Tablescape Trio, uh, which will consist of a gorgeous rosemary, thyme and oregano plant and will be potted in these gorgeous pots, these raw terracotta pots. Um, so you'll have three of these with their matching sauces and your three plants and then also um, your textural mosses and some um, dried uh, thyme twigs as well just to add some lovely texture. So first off we're going to go in with our gravel at the bottom of each of our pots. Not too much, just enough so that they don't sit in, um, the roots don't sit in uh, sort of just water for too long. And then we're going to, after a really good drink, just simply take our plants out and pop them straight into our pots. And gently push them down. Now that one I think I'm going to take some gravel out because that's a little bit 
too high. That's a little bit better. There we go. And then the other might have the same thing with these. Oh, I've just broken some. Oh. I'm just taking it out of the pot, unlike what I did. Yeah, that's going to need less as well. So just gently firming it down. Gorgeous. And then lastly, the time. Popping that straight in, gently firming down. You might find on your um, time pump, you might have these gorgeous little um, purple flowers. They've just started flowering, so it just looks so lovely. And then once you've done your um, plants, you've potted your plants, you then add on your moss. So we've got the, um, the fresh green bun moss. So just around the rim of the plant. Like so. On the oregano, you might need a bit, a bit more. And then lastly, some moss around the rosemary. And then add in your sphagnum moss as well into the gaps where your bun moss has been put. Just adds a really lovely texture and finishes off the potting so nicely. Maybe let some sort of overhang it's just a really gorgeous, rustic tablescape kit. Okay, and then we'll add in your thyme twigs. So these are dried, um, don't have to do anything with them. And I just like to sort of just interweave them amongst the fresh um, herbs. You don't need to, I'll give you, you know, more than probably what you'll need, um, but just gently put them, put them down into the plant. They don't need to go into the soil because, as I said, they're dried, so they're not living anymore, so they don't need any water supply. You might also find, this is what I thought before, you might not want them in the rosemary because the rosemary is quite sort of structured. So it's up to you. I'll pop them in anyway so you can see how they look and then you can decide. But definitely I think they work beautifully in the oregano and in the um, thyme plants for sure. Just adds a little something. Okay, so in terms of care for the herbs, they're so straightforward. Um, they just need sunlight and water. Um, these have been designed um, for indoor or outdoor, it's up to you. Uh, they have drainage holes in the pots and sources, so you can keep them on a kitchen island or by your um, stove top or wherever you want to put them. Um, and also, of course, you can uh, create a gorgeous tablescape with them in the garden as well. So it's completely up to you. They just need regular drink, um, sunlight, um, and yeah, you can enjoy them in your cooking or enjoy them just as they are as plants. Um, you can mix them up with other um, pots, um, other plants, other flowers, um, but they, yeah, they just work so beautifully. So I hope you really like these ones. So we're now going to move on to the final uh, pot kit for July, which is our rattan uh, planter, her planter. And this is one of my absolute favourites. It looks so stunning on an island or in the middle of a, a table. It can be kept indoors or outdoors. Um, it does really well, just need to make sure you keep it really well watered. So in your planter kit, you will receive two rosemary plants. Is there? One oregano, two lavenders, a thyme, and two of these really gorgeous 
um, sort of um, marjoram plants that are really lovely and sort of wild um, and miniature, so they're really, really lovely and love them. Okay. So the um, rattan planter comes in three sizes. We have the small, medium and large. I'm going to do the, the medium one for you today just to show you, but in essence it's exactly the same um, no matter which size you receive. Let's move those so you can see. Okay, so we're going to start off um, adding some gravel um, for drainage to your planter. Um, you'll see that it will have um, sort of like a plastic lining, which means it's fine to go on um, an indoor surface. Um, maybe be mindful um, of putting it on some on surfaces that are just special or um, porous or ornate, um, perhaps pop a mat underneath it. Uh, but if you're putting it on a wooden table that you're not kind of sort of massively precious about, then it will be absolutely fine. There's no reason why it should leak, but just a caveat, just to make sure that um, you don't end up with a damaged surface. Okay, so we're gonna add in um, the gravel. So the gravel goes all over the base. So quite a decent amount of gravel. Okay. And then basically, you just start potting um, your planter. You can either put the plants in and decide where you'd like them, or you can just go freestyle and start potting them up, them up however you want to. I'm going to show you how I think they should go, um, how I've um, sort of put them before, um, and then you can just see what you think. So I'm just gonna give this a level off then. So I tend to put um, a rosemary to the side and then a rosemary in the middle. I'm then going to go with the oregano on the other side. And don't worry, the plant pots don't fit in, obviously, because they're bigger, but once you take them out, they fit in fine. Um, a lavender around here and then another one around the back. The oregano, oh sorry, the thyme, again at the back, and then one of these little marjoram near the front, and then another one at the back in between the rosemary and the thyme. So there you have it, super simple. That's sort of like the mapping out um, of how I would like it to look. I like it to be different heights. I don't want it to all be really sort of um, one level or, you know, really sort of um, compact in, in one area. I like that it's a bit rusted. So I'm just going to take out the thyme and one of the mini marjorams and the lavender. So I've got my back basement here. So I'm just going to pop the thyme in first. So again, just Gently take out the plant after you've given them a really good water, everything in good water, and then just sort of pop it in. Now don't worry too much about sort of pushing it down yet, we'll do all that in a little while. I'm going to leave that, the little one, until last. I'm also going to leave the little lavender until last. So I'm almost making a kind of shape whereby the tallest plants are going in first. So here's the oregano, that's going in at the side. Again, being mindful that there needs to be space for the purple lavender. Move that lavender to the side. I'm then going to put the middle, um, not lavender, sorry, uh, rosemary. They're going to put the middle rosemary in. Get it out. You might find that their roots are quite embedded in the pot, but don't worry about being quite... Oh no, that's not coming out. Don't worry about <laughs> being quite forceful with it. Sorry, I'm being patient. There we go, that should do it. There we go. So, that one goes in the middle. And then hopefully this one might be, oh yeah, this should be easy. Oh, it's much easier. The other one goes at the side of it, okay. 
So that's all of the big plants in. And now we can start filling with the sort of little more delicate plants in the smaller pots. So round the back, I'm going in with the one of the purple lavenders. So that's going in between the oregano to the side and the thyme at the back. Okay, and then the marjoram. is going in between the oregano, sorry, the thyme and the rosemary at the side. Like that. And then we're around the front. We've got the purple, second purple lavender to go in. And then lastly, an other marjoram to go there. So then now that they're all in, you can kind of give them a bit of a jiggle around. So I've probably got things a bit more compact around the back here, so I'm just going to move them around a little bit. Now mine are all pretty compact to the extent that they don't need any more compost. You will have compost in your kits, so please, if you feel like there's gaps, please do use it. But I actually had some compost in this planter from when we were doing all the other pots. So that compost has sort of filled in all those gaps quite nicely. So after I've now done this, I'm gonna sort of nicely, firmly push everything down and then add in my moss. So we have the green bun, bun moss. So that's just going to go in the areas where there's a bit of space. So that just sits on top of the um, compost. And then also the sphagnum moss can go in too. Just adds a lovely texture in comparison to the, the other moss, the bun moss. So just fill in the gaps. Like so. Okay, and there you have it. So that's your medium rattan planter, herb planter, um, and like I say, you can order the small, medium or large, um, but yeah, gorgeous on a, on a circular table outside um, or on an island or on a, a dining table, um, just beautiful in your kitchen or in your garden.